This is the intersection of Victory Pocket Road and Kenmore Road in Victory Pocket. It's a pretty standard sort of suburban intersection controlled by a giveaway sign. Kenmore Road terminates here, and Victory Pocket Road runs between Mogul Road and Mandalay at the Brisbane River in Victory Pocket, and feeds into and out of the Centenary Motorway. The Victory Pocket on-ramp is one of the shortest motorway on-ramps I've ever seen. The intersection carries around 21,000 vehicles per day according to Brisbane City Council's project communication, and it's also a primary route on the Principal Cycle Network Plan, the state and local government collaborative plan that outlines where the future cycling network should be completed. This intersection has a bad crash history and local residents have been demanding action for many years. Upgrades are under construction here at a cost to Brisbane ratepayers of about $15 million. But why is what's being built and the entire process to get here a textbook case study of Brisbane City Council's endemic car culture? That's today's video. For years, residents in Fig Tree Pocket had been raising concerns about the safety of the Fig Tree Pocket Road and Kemmel Road intersection. Residents living nearby went to the extent of having a first aid kit near their front door so they could render assistance so frequent were car crashes. The crash data from the Queensland State Government backs this up. There were 17 reported crashes at the intersection itself between 2001 and 2018, and more at the intersections with Pilara Street at each end. Most of these crashes were drivers emerging from Fiji Pocket Road to turn right and being hit by through traffic. Five required hospitalisation, including a cyclist in 2018. In that year, residents lodged a petition with the Brisbane City Council asking that the traffic lights be installed. Not only did they highlight the motor vehicle crash rate, but also the danger posed to pedestrians with a lack of crossing facilities. Their request was simple, install traffic lights and pedestrian crossings. What the petition didn't mention was that Kenmore Road and Victory Pocket Road feature as primary routes on the Principal Cycle Network Plan. The PCNP is a collaborative state and local government plan that identifies where the cycling network should be built, and it came about as a result of the fatal crash for Richard Pollitt in Kenmore in 2011. The Queensland Department of Transport and Main Roads has extensive guidance on the selection of cycle tracks for different road environments and information about level of traffic stress and types of cyclists to inform road designers to produce a good outcome for cyclists of all ages and abilities. It even has a helpful table of the type of cycling infrastructure appropriate for different types of roads and their function. In this case, both Victory Pocket Road and Kenmore Road are collector roads with speed limits currently of 60 km per hour. The recommendation is for high quality parallel off-road separated cycle path or cycle tracks due to high speed difference of 20 km per hour or more. Unfortunately, there's no legislative instrument in place that requires infrastructure upgrades along the PCNP to include cycling infrastructure to the standard befitting a primary route. Nor are local governments required to follow the state government's cycling infrastructure designs. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. In any case, the request for light seems pretty clear. Kenmore Road is quite wide up the hill, and Victory Pocket Road is wide heading down towards the Centenary Motorway, albeit without curb and channel or footpath on the eastern side. Victory Pocket heading east is a bit more constrained with the gully, and Erigy Place is left in left out just prior to the actual intersection. So, whack in traffic lights at the main intersection, cut into the centre median to provide a right turn lane into the Victory Pocket Road, use some leftover space to provide an off-road share path up the hill and we're done, right? Well, no, and that's where Brisbane City Council's car culture kicked in. Once you give a problem like this to a traffic engineer, what you get is a massively over-engineered solution that prioritises motor vehicles and does everything it can to keep pedestrians and cyclists out of the way of that all-important traffic flow. But first, they wanted to give the impression that the community had a say. They provided two high-level design options. The first provided a slip lane on Victory Pocket Road to head east, with one lane proceeding straight ahead up Kemmel Road and a right turn lane into Erigy Place. Erigy Place having a traffic light to provide access in all three directions. Hmm, suddenly increasing access into and out of Erigy Place became a priority. For context, Erigy Place is a dead end street that services, I don't know, 20, 30 residents. Given its proximity to the main T junction, it does make sense to include Erigy Place in the design. However, given the small number of movements in and out, does it really need to have right turn access into it and out of it? The design option also provided a right turn lane into Victory Pocket Road off Kenmore Road, 
and for some reason provided two through traffic lanes heading south, despite the fact the current road only has one. There was a proposed traffic light pedestrian crossing of Ergy Place and Fitchy Pocket Road, but crucially, not of the slip lane. And there was no provision for cycling. The second design option, well, it's basically the first design option without the slip lane. It still greatly increased access to and from those 20 to 30 homes on Herigy Place. It still added two through lanes on Kenmore Road, and it provided absolutely no cycling infrastructure. Suffice to say, as the head of the local bicycle user group and genuine pain in the ass advocate, I had opinions. The design without a slip lane was best, but I implored them to include proper separated cycling infrastructure and reconsider over-engineering multiple through lanes from Kenmore Road. The overall consensus from the community was that design without a slip lane was best. Thank heavens for small mercies, I guess. So of course, the next step in the process from Brisbane City Council is to provide a more detailed concept design of the chosen solution and some of the consultation feedback. Oddly, the consultation feedback did not mention cycling at all. But anyway, um, here was the design they came up with. Still full access in and out of Ergy Place for 20 to 30 residents that have been coping fine with left in, left out for years. Two through lanes on Kenmore Road heading south. Pedestrian crossings on Ergy Place and Fitchy Pocket Road. And they added some cycling infrastructure. Can you see it? Look closer. Closer. There it is. A cyclist curb ramp to get off the road and onto the footpath. Again, council sought feedback, including an in-person session which I attended to be a pain in the ass like I do. Suffice to say, the project manager was adamant that there couldn't possibly be less car provision because it would cause too much congestion and danger, so we didn't see how they could possibly accommodate cycling infrastructure. Nevertheless, he committed to take my feedback on board. Residents too were not happy with this over-engineered response and lodged another petition, pointing out that the new intersection would be four lanes wide, remove trees and create unnecessary movement, particularly in and out of Ergy Place. Of course, that petition fell on deaf ears because the traffic engineers were already giddy with excitement about being able to create a massively over-engineered concrete and asphalt monstrosity to put on their CV, presumably with the hope of getting a job in the US of A ruining their cities. In the meantime, Brisbane City Council was getting on with another intersection upgrade. This is Monia Road and Bellwood Street in Dara. It's also a busy intersection in an industrial area that carries a lot of heavy vehicles and in total accommodates over 15,000 vehicle movements per day. It's also on the principal cycle network plan as a priority route, forming a key active transport corridor heading east-west between River Hills and Oxley. It also connects a mostly dead-end street in Bellwood Street to the north, although there is a retractable bollard that allows bus, foot and bike traffic through from Cinnamon Park, a really useful feature to provide public and active transport connections to Dara Station. Like Kenmore Road, it has a bad crash history, the council noting that there were 12 crashes requiring medical treatment or hospitalisation between 2016 and 2021. Interestingly, that's more than the three crashes reported at Kenmore and Fitchery Pocket Road in the same period. The intersection includes a four-way set of traffic lights and slip lanes from Monia into Bellwood in both directions. But while Kenmore Road is being widened to two through traffic lanes and not providing any cycling infrastructure at all, Monia Road was kept at one lane each way, plus they added two metre wide painted on-road bike lanes. Admittedly, those bike lanes disappear when you need them most, but it's reasonable to assume that in future upgrades, these bike lanes will continue and join up. Both Kenmore Road and Monia Road were about 12 metres wide prior to their respective upgrades. Both are on the principal cycle network plan, and yet only Monia Road got bike lanes. And yes, Painted bike lanes are far from gold standard since they don't provide any physical protection from passing motorists who are easily distracted, but compared to nothing at all, you tend to take what you can get. The project was delivered for $4.7 million, about a third of the cost of the Kenmore Road Future Pocket Road intersection. Don't get me wrong, this Monty Road intersection design is far from perfect, and the absence of bike lanes or shared paths along Bellwood Street is a disappointment, considering riding on road with industrial vehicles is not something interested but concerned cyclists who fear a high level of traffic stress are necessarily going to tolerate. But it at least recognised the importance of this cycle route by providing on-road bike lanes. It makes the excuses being offered for not doing so at Kemmel Road and Fitchery Pocket Road much harder to believe. 
back to Victory Pocket Road and fast forward eight months and the outcome of the community feedback was published. This time they did mention cycling facilities. By signalising this intersection, we will improve the safety and connectivity for people riding and walking. Due to the challenging topography and constraints of the road width, we are unable to include on-road bike lanes. The design has maintained wider verge lanes on Victory Pocket Road and Kenmore Road, allowing shared use with vehicles and connection to new path footpaths and crossing facilities to ensure a safer environment for all users. Council is currently reviewing the Brisbane City Plan and will investigate options for future cycling infrastructure along this route or whether an alternative alignment is more suitable. So there was enough width to add two through lanes on Kenmore and Future Pocket Road, but not enough width to provide a shared path or protected bike lanes. Right. Remember, Kemmel Road is the same width that Monia Road was prior to the intersection upgrade, and Brisbane City Council managed to deliver two metre wide bike lanes on Monia Road. The question is, why are they adding two lanes through the Kenmore Road intersection? While they will not give a straight answer to that question, the gist is that engineers still believe that adding more room to queue means you'll get more traffic through on a light phase. Of course, traffic flow then grinds to a halt where traffic then has to merge into one lane, which we know drivers do very badly. <sighs> anyway. Council also said that to improve safety and reduce congestion on Kenmore Road, access into and out of Polara Street will be left in left out only. Currently motorists queuing to turn right from Kenmore Road into Polara Street cause inbound traffic to queue on Kenmore Road. It seems they have a lot of worries about queuing. Almost like the problem is too many cars. Maybe they should try doing something about that, like, I don't know, build bike lanes? In fact, this change also has significant impacts for cyclists heading towards Victory Pocket who make this turn now. Instead, they would have to continue on to the traffic lights in the right-hand lane of these miraculously created extra traffic lanes despite the constrained corridor and turn right. More feedback ensued, particularly from the local bicycle user group. <clears throat> and earlier this year, the final design was released. Victory! They added more cycling infrastructure. Can you see it? Look closer. Yes! Another curb ramp for cyclists to get off the road and onto the footpath. I decided to get all boomer and started writing more letters, expressing my disdain for this whole process. I also asked for confirmation about right turns for cyclists being banned into Palara Street, and the response astounded me. To improve safety and reduce congestion on Kenmore Road, the right turn from Kenmore Road into Pilara Street will be banned for all vehicles including cyclists following completion of the intersection upgrade. However, the right turn from Pilara Street into Kenmore Road will be permitted. Hang on. Right turns into Pilara Street are dangerous, but right turns out of Pilara Street on a weird angle are okay? The project manager also said this in response to my disappointment at the absence of cycling infrastructure in a project on the principal cycle network plan. Due to the challenging topography and constraints of the road reserve, we are unable to include on-road bike lanes. However, the design has maintained wider verge lanes on Victory Pocket Road and Kenmore Road allowing shared use with vehicles. The new intersection will also include bike on-off ramps at the pedestrian crossing on Victory Pocket Road to allow cyclists to connect with the new pathways or utilise the crossing facility. Hmm. Shared use with motor vehicles. That always works well, doesn't it? I guess that's why they're trying to get people to get off and utilise the new pathways. In other words, get off the road and out of the way of the cars. Being concerned about their reasoning for allowing right turns out of Pilara Street, but not in, I wrote back again. And the reason for banning right turns into Pilara Street, well, it had me somewhere between incredulous and rageful. Currently, motorists turning right into Pilara Street must wait for a safe gap in the traffic which causes eastbound traffic to build up on Kenmore Road. This poses a significant safety risk and likelihood of rear end accidents due to the high traffic volumes on Kenmore Road, as motorists coming around the bend have a limited time to safely stop and set insufficient road width to pass the vehicle waiting to turn. And again, he repeated the same line about bicycle infrastructure. We recognise your concerns with the exclusion of on-road bike lanes, however, as mentioned previously, the design includes wider verge lanes to allow cyclists and motorists to share the road. Okay, so allowing right turns into Pilara Street aren't safe because motorists are apparently so bad at paying attention and driving to the conditions, they're likely to run up the backside of a stationary motor vehicle in front of them. 
but it's perfectly fine for cyclists to just trust drivers to notice them in a wide verge lane and not run up the back of them or sideswipe them. To be fair to the guy who was replying to my emails, he was obviously not coming up with the answers. The fact that were repeated verbatim in consultation feedback into different emails shows that this is the messaging that they've been told to provide. And that's the nature of dealing with bureaucratic monoliths like Brisbane City Council. The people you deal with, you don't actually deal with. Their responses are carefully crafted and sanitized in order to not give any indication that, yeah, you know what, Joe Public is right, this makes no sense. It does make you wonder whether engineers who do know better die a little inside every time they have to hit send on a bullshit response like this. And really, that's that. There's no way this council is ever going to change this project. Shovels have hit dirt, trees are being raised, and the latest council budget has allocated almost $15 million of Brisbane ratepayers' funds to build it. There will be a safety improvement with traffic lights controlling turning movements and reducing the risk of crashes. The addition of pedestrian crossing lights is also an improvement over the existing intersection with no pedestrian crossings at all, not even a refuge island or curb ramps. So no doubt pedestrians will wait an eternity to cross and be given a fraction of a second before the green man turns flashing red. But it is so incredibly disappointing to see the priorities, providing four traffic lines through the intersection, over-engineering access to a local dead-end street, and providing no cycling infrastructure on a 60 km per hour collector road that is a primary route on the principal cycle network plan is the absolute epitome of a car-centric approach to transport. To claim that the road environment is constrained while you're bulldozing land and trees, squeezing in an extra through traffic lane simply because that's what traffic modelling tells you you should do for queuing is the kind of bureaucratic spin you laugh at until you realise it puts lives at risk of those who choose to leave their car at home, doing their bit for reducing congestion, pollution, noise and greenhouse gas emissions. From a council led by a Lord Mayor who spruiks Brisbane as a clean, green and sustainable city and claims to want a car free Olympics in 2032, it is clear that being able to live car free or even car light in the suburbs is not a priority. The real frustration is not just this intersection, but that by building it this way, without cycling infrastructure, then future upgrades along the road, which will no doubt come, will be less likely to include cycling infrastructure too. It becomes a snowball effect. Fail to deliver in one location, then you don't bother in the next. I know this video is a negative one. But if you like this look into the demoralising world of local government consultation processes and the head against brick wall nature of cycling advocacy, please consider hitting like on this video. Subscribing also really helps and hit the notification bell if you want to know the next time I wallow in despair. And if you can share the video with friends and family, maybe some of the sweet, sweet revenue from the ads you had to endure to watch this video might come to me someday. And that might help pay for my therapy sessions after years of dealing with local and state bureaucracies. The lack of commitment to build cycling infrastructure along the principal cycle network plan when roads are upgraded like this renders that plan utterly useless. And that has to change if Brisbane is going to free itself from the car dominant place it is, where 80% of all trips are taken by car and more than half of those trips are less than 5 kilometres, which is easy cycling distance. I put a lot of the blame on traffic engineers in this video and, well, to me, Traffic engineers are to urban transport what homeopaths are to medicine. They'll recommend you some essential oils or extra traffic lanes, but all it'll do is make you smell. It could just as easily be that the civil engineering within council is acting on the edict of the elected council administration. Though when I do raise these issues with elected councillors locally, they tend to throw up their hands and say, look, it's what the engineers tell me. Don't get me wrong, I think the local councillors I speak to really would like to see their communities be safer and more inviting to walk and cycle and less car dependent. But they assume the traffic engineers share that same vision. They don't. Their number one priority is always increasing traffic flow and that that, by its nature, comes at the expense of pedestrians and cyclists, both in terms of safety and amenity. The 1970s have called and they want their transport plans back. We need a better city projects office with a better, more modern approach to solving the traffic problems in Brisbane. This old way of putting cars first is not helping make the Brisbane of tomorrow even better than the Brisbane of today. The only way things will change is if people like you who see that car culture and car dependent urban and suburban road designs are making our communities less livable, less healthy, less safe, speak up. 
Share this video with your friends and family. Talk to your friends and family about it. Talk to your local councillor and candidates in the lead up to the next council election, which is in March 2024. Use your vote wisely. Ride safely, drive early, despite how hard Brisbane City Council tries to force you to, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.